<clears throat> Good day, folks. This is Greg Judy. Um, we're continuing with our series. Um, this is the part four. Um, I've already covered one, two, and three, and if you've missed those, you need to go back. Otherwise, you're probably going to be lost what we're talking about here, but basically what I'm covering is there's, you know, so many people coming out to the land now and getting uh, a piece of land, whether it's five acres, 20 acres, 30 acres, Folks, what I'm drawing here is all relevant. This could be even relevant to uh, 200 acres. It would work on a 200-acre farm. So what I'm drawing here today is we're going to be covering how to rotate animals. How do you rotate them once you get the infrastructure in? I've already got the infrastructure in. I've explained it step by step, what we've done, but I'm going to recap it. So we started with when we bought this farm... There's five acres, and the previous owner had five strands of barbed wire all the way around it. Well, to rotate animals, you have to have electricity. There's no other way to rotate them. Um, so what we were doing is we came in, the first thing we did is we ran an offset barbed wire fence on the inside, I'm sorry, on an offset high tensile fence. Kind of tongue-tied right there. And we use this. This is high tensile wire. It's 170,000 psi. Uh, you, you can use, you can use 180,000 psi if you want. Um, I wouldn't recommend 200,000 psi. It's too darn brittle and it breaks. Um, this is a timeless fence post, and uh, I do. I gotta you know put a comment out there. Um, if you do buy timeless fence posts, I do get a small commission on that. So. You know, if you don't want me to get a commission, don't buy a Thomas Fence Post, I guess, because, I don't know, some people are getting upset because Greg makes a little a little tiny piece of something he's promoting. But uh, the rest of the products I'm talking about here today, uh, you know, I'm not a, time, I'm not a, a Joe Megaflow or a, any of this other equipment, but this is, why do I promote this post? The Thomas Fence Post, because it's the best dang post in the world, that's why. It works. It works. We got it all over our farms. It is the best post, and I'll tell you why. It's got UV. It's already got a UV inhibitor on it. It's already pre-drilled. You don't have to sharpen the darn thing. And you can drive with a steel post driver. And it's got a 20-year warranty on it. And it's being used out of recycled vinyl windows. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, it's non-conductive. You don't need an insulator for it. And it's attractive very sharp um i don't i don't enjoy drilling holes they're already drilled for you a bunch of them however many spacing you want to go so let's keep going here on the outside against this barbed wire fence i ran a two strand high tensile wire fence and my spacing is uh, eight inches and 15 inches so it's eight inches off the ground the bottom wire, the top wire is 15 inches off the ground. And the one thing I left off is six inches from barbed wire fence. Okay, why do I, why do I run that wire six inches off that barbed wire fence? It's because if I go out a whole foot, 12 inches, first of all, the animals can't graze that anymore. I just fenced it off. So I lost a foot of my farm all the way around. That's stupid. That's just stupid. And that foot that you fenced off is all going to grow up into brush. Now you got to go out there and cut the brush off of it because you fenced it off or the animals can't eat it. Six inches. Six inches. Get it tight. You don't have to worry about it. It's not going to get into your barbed wire. Folks, there's so many of these um, clippy things, those little plastic clips that you clip on your steel post and you put your wire. No, 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 don't do that. And there's another one, it's a steel deal that wraps around your barbed bar. Those things are gonna flip down and they're gonna get, this is gonna get against your barbed wire all the way around your farm. You're never gonna keep your fence hot and your animals are gonna be gone. Build it right, just build it right. I'm not blowing smoke up anybody. I want you to do it right. I don't have time to be after checking my fence every day. And if you do it right at the very start, grazing livestock is a great occupation. It's, it's awesome. It's fun. It's profitable, but not if you're out there every night with a, with a light in your mouth trying to 
<laughs> and your little pin light and you're walking in trying to find out or the headlight on your head trying to figure out where your shorts at remember this had steel post every 12 feet with your barbed wire you're running a uh this next to it on those little plastic clippy things uh-uh you're, you're not going to keep it hot you might for a while but sooner or later deer's going to hit it's going to knock it off and now you don't have any power so timeless this is a four footer these are awesome because of the right wing. You can drive them, you know, for an offset fence like this, they're not holding any tension far as this away. All they're doing is holding the wire in place. And so you could probably go, you know, I, I recommend anywhere from 20 to 30 feet between posts. Okay. And on the corners, you're going to hook into your, your corner post with what they call a bullet insulator. And you can take a piece of soft galvanized wire, wrap it around that corner post, and then each one of these high tensiles goes right through here. You don't need any fastener. I, I forgot to cover that. They're already drilled. So you just run your wire right through these fat, right through your holes. There's no fasteners required to keep your water your wire in place. Okay? So now we move over to the center here. I talked about this. What is that deal? Well, I tell you what that deal is. We're bringing sheep onto this farm. It's five acres, okay? It's a relatively small acreage. You're gonna get along better with sheep than your cattle because cattle eat more grass than sheep do. So if you've got a very small acreage, I recommend sheep every day compared to cattle, okay? Um, so you, your sheep are dumped into the crowd, first of all. You just bought them, they're kind of spooked. You need a catch area. And this is a 16 foot cattle panels fastened to steel posts. That's going to keep a sheep in. They're not going to get out. When you open the trailer, let them into that corral. Let them calm down. Let them calm down. Probably have, you know, some water in there so they can get them a drink. And if they've been hauled a long distance, put some, you know, uh, some legume hay in there, some clover, maybe alfalfa, just to give them something to chew on. Okay. After they've been in there a couple of hours, you've already got your first paddock put in. I'm getting ahead of myself, though. <laughs> let me stop right there. What's this wire here? Well, it's a paddock division. So I just split the farm in two, that's what I did. I took five acres and now I've got I've got 2.5 acres in each spot, okay? Each line. So basically I took a square and I turned it into two rectangles. Why did I do that? I don't want a lot of fence into your fence in my five acres. It's gonna mess me up. That's all it's gonna do, it's gonna get in the way. So I've got my three strand, why do I run three strands? Well, my sheep are not broke to hot wire. And if you only put one or two strands out there, they're gonna bolt right through it. So when they're in that corral right here, what I do is I put hot wire around that corral, just poly, uh, something like this. Um, I use these geared reels, and I'll get into that more in a minute, but I use poly braid. And so I'm gonna take a poly braid fence and go around that corral so that when they get up there and investigate it, they get shot, okay? And that's called breaking them, shot hot wire breaking them. And depending on the sheep, you may have to do that for a, you know a day or so, but that paddock division has got three wires and they're six inches, 12 inches, and eight inches high, okay? And I'm using the same post. I'm gonna use this. This is a timeless post. Uh, you know, you got your, you'd have your six inches here. You come up, there'd be your 12, and up here'd be your 18, okay? And on each corner, I didn't draw that in. Put an X. On each corner, you're gonna need a, a corner post. And pulling three wires like that, um, I would go with a eight inch or seven to eight inch wood post and put about three bags of sackcrete around it. It's not going anywhere. Put it in the ground four foot, put sackcrete on it, you're done. It's gonna hold. Because remember, your top wire is only 18 inches off the ground. We're running sheep here, we're not running cattle. 18 inches, well my goodness, there's no way 18 inch wire is gonna put cantilever enough to pull that corner post over, okay? It's gonna be a good fence. But before I put my wire in, I'm gonna I'm gonna trench in my my line, which we already talked about in a previous video, which is these. 
okay? Go back to the last video. I covered this. I'm not going to cover it again. These are my water points, okay? And that's what these are. These are the quick couplers. And on a five-acre farm, I'm going to put them, you know, you, you can put them as, as deep as your pocketbook is. If you want to put them every 50 feet or every 100 feet, whatever. Um, they're not that expensive to put in. You're looking at about $45 per unit. It may be a little cheaper than that. I haven't priced these for a while, but this is a three-quarter inch high-density polyethylene with a Filmac three-quarter inch T. And I'll take this out real quick so you don't have to go back and look at the last video if you don't want. Um, they just screw in. This, this is called the Plasin Quick Coupler. They just screw into that female three-quarter inch pipe thread. That's what this is, okay? So I'll put that back on there. This is my water. It's hooked into my public water. If you got a well or, heck, you may have this hooked on your house water, whatever. You got to have pressure for these to work very well. Okay, now, that's what each one of those are. And we've got those surrounded with this. So we've already cut out our mouse holes. This is going around each one of those to keep the uh, coons and possums and snakes out of your quick couplers. Um, you just put a PVC cap on it when you're done. They can't get in there, okay? And you want that pipe on that PVC I just showed you, that's a six inch. You want that to be sticking up about uh, six to seven inches above ground and, and keep it close to your fence. Once I get that put in, now I'm gonna run my high tensile fence right beside it. Why am I gonna do that? Why am I gonna have my high tensile fence right next to my water? Here's where the, what they call it, the, the pedal meets the road. So, now we're gonna graduate to rotating animals. Okay, we're gonna rotate animals. Why do you wanna rotate animals? Why, why not just give them the whole darn five acres and forget all about this? Just put a tank up here and give them the whole five acres. Go home, you know, have a cold drink and forget about it. I'll tell you why. You go broke. The sheep will starve to death and your pasture is going to be overgrown. They're going to get parasites and you're not going to make a darn blooming dime. And it's not any fun watching animals die because you were negligent in setting up your farm. It just irks me sometimes to look at some of these uh, these uh, YouTubers that are making some of these videos and are calling themselves regenerative farmers and you look right behind them, there's a bunch of sheep and goats and bare dirt. They're calling that regenerative farming. No, 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 that's, that's animal negligence. That's what that is. They're not moving the animals. And then, oh, I gotta worm them. Well, yeah, you gotta worm them. You got them on dirt. You're not moving them. They're exposed to their feces. See, when you move animals, they're not exposed to the manure. You don't need to worm them. You don't need to worm them. We haven't wormed our cows for 30 years. Not the calves, anything. The, cat, the sheep have never been wormed. Now, it took a while to get there, but we, that's where we're at today. So, sorry, I'll, let me climb down off that stool a minute. Um, I get aggravated when people mistreat animals and they talk like they're doing a good thing. They're not. They're not. They don't know what they're doing. You've got to rotate animals. So, on this five-acre track, folks, the sole purpose of putting in this water and this one fence is so that I have control of my five acres. I'm using five acres as an example. It could be 100. It could, I don't care. It's all scale relevant. On 100 acres, you might be running 20 cows in here. On five acres, if you're going to be running cattle, I'm not going to go with over two steers. And in Arizona, you can't run two. There's not going to be enough grass on that for five, for even one steer on five acres. They're, they don't have the rain out there. So a lot of it's dependent on the rainfall, how much rain you get. Well, in Missouri, we're at a 38 to 42 inch rainfall area. We can grow a lot of grass. So our stocking rate is about two acres per animal, okay? Uh, some people around here are three to four acres. They don't rotate. They just give them the whole farm. We're not going to do that. So we're trying to give our grass time to grow back. That's what this is all about. And if you're not willing to move your animals and give your grass time to grow back after grazing it off, you're not going to succeed. You're not. You're not going to succeed because we call that grazing the roots off your farm. What you're doing is you're taking your plants down too short, you're not giving it enough time to grow back before you come back, and the roots haven't even had time to grow back. And you keep doing that, instead of having a root that long, 
you're gonna have a root that long. I'm serious, half inch. And then when it gets hot and dry in the summer, your plants will all stop growing. Some of them are gonna die. And now you're stuck feeding hay to your animals and they're not gonna like that. They're gonna get thin, they're not gonna breed back, they're gonna get parasites, and it's just, it's just downhill from there. It is. I see it all the time. It's just awful. Uh, I don't understand it. I mean, I, I, I was raised on a farm. I've always been on a farm, and I, I understand that animals have to eat just like I do. And some people don't get it. They just don't get it. I mean, I watched a guy this winter, went three weeks and never gave a cow bell hay. And it was below zero every day, and that cow is now gone. I think it died. You know, that guy should have never owned a cow. It's just awful. Anyway, so... We're going to come in here and we're going to start rotating animals. And the way we're going to do it is we're going to take right here. And we're going to put that in. And put that line I just drew, that is a paddock division, a temporary paddock division. And what is it? It's one of these. This is the O'Brien step-in. I sharpen them. I put a point on them on a grinder when I buy them. They're, they're blunt when I get them. Folks, this is the best post made in the world for temporary fencing. We move them twice a day. We use the heck out of these posts. And I, it aggravates me when people say, well, I just go down to the corner store and I get what's in the store. Well, yeah, I'll show you what you get in the store. And it's right here. This is what you get in the local store. <laughs> this was $2, okay? This one is $4.50. I'd like to see you pull that post out of the ground in a drought. I'd like to see you get it in the ground. You're going to need a cordless drill, okay? This one I can get in the ground. I don't care how dry it gets. I can get it in the ground. And if the ground freezes solid, I can still get this one. I can't even get, begin to get this one in the ground. And if I do get fortunate enough to find a crack and jam it in there, you're not going to get it out. It's going to take a mule to pull this thing out. And the clips, look at these clips. Whoever designed this did not put in fence. You can't get the poly wire out of them. You can't. You can't get the poly wire out. Poly braid, I'm sorry. These, piece of cake. Piece of cake. You can get those out of there in a heartbeat. They just they just pull right out. And the, 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 the weight, this post is twice as heavy as this one. So, yeah. Use the right tools. <laughs> I wanted to get that one off my chest. You know, everybody's like, oh, you're using a $4.50 post. Yep, I am. And I've been using this same post for 15 years. 15 years. Keep them out of the sun when you're not using them. Don't lay them out in the sun. UV is hard on plastic post. And Stefan from Canada, thank you, Stefan. The other day you were talking about you can treat these with um, armor on. Put armor on, they'll last you know three times longer. Anyway. Every 40 to 50 feet through here, well, the sheep, um, starting out, you're going to need uh, probably three wires across here to keep your sheep in. Ours are broke to one. We've got them broke to one hot wire. So on our sheep, I'm going to act like my sheep are coming in here, okay? I'm going to put it on this one right here. I'm 10 inches off the ground, okay? So I'm running a wire across here. I'm going to put these on about every 20 feet. But Greg, you locked them in there. Yep, I got my gate shut here. How in the world are those sheep going to get water? Well, I'm going to show you. So I'm getting ahead of myself here. Here, here's my. So I'm hooking this on cold. This is the plastic handle you get with every Terragate reel. Now this is an old, old reel. This is an O'Brien. Uh, it's not a bad reel, but I hate their locking mechanism. Give me a Terragate every day. This handle goes on the edge of the perimeter, and I'm going to drag it out, take it across, and I'm going to hook it right there. And how do I hook it? I hook it just like this, folks. I wrap it around three times. That hook hangs on that high tensile wire right next to a timeless post. It's energized. When you hook that on there and hang it, make sure your hand's on this plastic handle. Don't touch the steel. <laughs> you only do that once, and it's going to knock the stuff in now. You won't do it again. I've already energized it. I've already got it energized. So there's my strand in. I've got my O'Brien step-ins in. How am I going to get water to them? 
but here it is. So here's my quick coupler, okay? These are installed right there, okay? I'm gonna take that white PVC cap off of this. This is my stand pipe, okay? This is down inside there like that, okay? That's to keep the possums and the snakes and the coons out of it. I'm gonna open this up like that. This is my male. This is my male that goes down to my female. And the minute I plug that in, that hole, and in, energize it, I've got water. And that water's coming out of that pipe. But you know, Greg, you can't water sheep out of that. Well, no, you're right. Let me, uh, let me grab this. Ha-ha. Here's my good hose, folks. I was just telling you about these hoses. These are awesome. Um, I told you wrong a while ago. I told you 100 PSI. This is a 200 PSI hose. You can get these at hydraulic shops and get the good brass fittings. They just crimp these on there. This is a three quarter inch, 200 PSI, super heavy duty hose. You're not gonna ever break this. The sun is not gonna burst this. And you only need it to be six feet long. That's, 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 you can get them longer if you want, but I, I go six foot. All right, so it's got hose threads in here. Well, guess what? When you buy a Plasin quick coupler, this has got male, thre I'm sorry, female threads on it. Those threads are pipe thread. And if you try and screw a garden hose on there, you're gonna strip these threads. So you go buy an adapter. This is a brass adapter. You can get them at a hardware store. It's got pipe threads on that end, okay? So I put my pipe threads on. And on the other end, there's my hose thread, okay? Male. When I get these crimped on, I always get two females crimped on. Female hose thread. So now, I just screw this in. There I am, got that in. I go down in my quick coupler. Boom, there's water coming out that hose. Where's it going to? Where's it going to? I'm gonna show you, there's the other end of it. It's coming out, I'm blasting you with it. No. Aha. Here's my Job Mega Flow. Folks, this is an awesome, awesome float valve. And this is a new one, it's not assembled, but I, there's the mail, okay? There's the mail, and it's got that pipe thread on there again. You can't take this hose and put it on there, you're gonna strip it. So what am I gonna do? Well, I'm gonna put an adapter on the other end, and here's one that's already installed. Folks, this is just a 50 gallon barrel, I cut it in two. There it is, there's my, there's my threads. So I can't hardly hold that up there for y'all to see it, but you get the gist. I'm gonna put that on there and then I'll show the inside of it. There's my float. And the way that works is the same way as you flush your toilet. When you flush the toilet, the float drops down and it fills back up. When the cattle drink, the float drops down and when the cattle stop drinking, the float comes back up and shuts your valve off. It's that simple. There's not another valve made that I know of that's as trouble-free and as durable as this guy. They're not cheap. Uh, you know, I can remember I could buy these for $30. I don't know what they are now. I think like 48, maybe 50. But you, don't, you know, you just, I would buy two. That way if something would happen, you've got a backup. But see, here's the float. And as it fills up, it shuts this off, it pulls up on the bottom of that float, and the water's coming out right there on the very bottom, right where my finger is. And I mean, it's full flow, it's blasting out. Now, you saw that little tank I held up, that's a 50 gallon barrel cut in two. That's plenty big. I mean, we're, we're watering, um, well, when the sheep get done lambing, we'll have 300. <laughs> we're, we're watering 300 sheep on a, it's 50 gallons, but I've got it cut in two, and I only let it fill up within about three inches of the top. So there's probably only about 35, 40 gallons in there. That's for 300 sheep, but it's pressurized. So when they drink, I mean, it's coming out full flow. So 
My water tank is right there. Now, I want to move them. So this is day one. Day two, I've already got my next my next reel in with my uh, Brian, uh, yeah, the O'Brien step-in post. And when I take my reel off right here, I just reel it back, the sheep go boom. They get used to this. They love moving. Okay, so now the sheep go into here, boom. Well, once they all go in, I just take that reel and I put it back up. Now the sheep are not on paddock number one. It can start to recover. It can start to recover. It can start to grow back, okay? You just keep doing that around your farm. All, and when you get down here, you're coming this way because you've got couplers, so you can water both sides of the farm with the same water coupler. That's what's so beautiful about this. And you can keep a back fence in, and it's not that hard to do. You're just putting the reel back up, okay? Just putting the reel back up, one, once you get them broke to one single wire. Folks, this works. There's day one. By the time you get around in the springtime, you need to... In Missouri, I'm going to give you an example. In Missouri, we, we want to get around our farm. Assuming I start at the grass and it's about eight inches high, and it was just cranking. I want to get around this whole farm in about 25 to 30 days. So you can calculate out the size of your paddocks to give you 30 days to get back to here. Now you get into summertime. It's not growing as fast. You may need 45 to 50 days. You got to make your paddock smaller. You're trying to give that grass more time to fully recover. So, I think I've covered it. I've really rambled on long. This may be the longest video I've ever made. I think it is. Uh, I'm at 26 minutes, but folks, there's just a lot here to cover. And um, I think what I've talked about here today may save your farm. Um, that's what I'm about. Jan and I made a lot of mistakes starting out, and I want to prevent you all from making those mistakes. And uh, I'm not trying to blow smoke up anybody. I just tell you the way we do things. And if you, if you don't want to do it, that's fine. I mean, go on and do it the way you want to do it. But um, I'm telling you, we're doing this right now today, and it works. <laughs> and we've been very successful with it. Our animals are very healthy. Our land is thriving. Our livelihood is thriving. We have three young men now hired on our farm. We're teaching them, the next generation, how to thrive. It's about making a living on the land. It's not about giving the input people all your money. Keep some of it. Keep some of it. It's yours. It's your hard work that made it. Keep it. Don't give it all the townspeople. It's yours. This is simple. I mean, I didn't cover a lot of stuff here tonight. I mean, I, you had to buy a water hose. You had to buy a valve, some uh, timeless post, uh, some high tensile wire, you know, I didn't buy a $300,000 <laughs> combine or, you know, $150,000 four-wheel drive, 150-horse tractor or disc and mowing all that. You don't need any of that stuff. You don't need any of it. Not to do grazing systems. So, and don't go buy, don't go build a barn. The first thing people, oh, I'm a farmer. I got to go build a barn. No, you don't. No, you don't. You don't need to go build a barn. Build your fence. Get your water out there. Get some animals out there. Those animals didn't ask you to build a barn. They don't need it. I got a guy in Minnesota, 40 below zero. He puts them in the woods. He doesn't have a barn. He's got uh, four foot of snow up there right now. Them cows are not in the barn. Sheep, they do fine. So, yeah, I'll get off the barn kick. <laughs> Everyone have a good one. Uh, hit that subscribe button on the way out. And um, the part five, uh, there's a few things I didn't cover on fencing. The materials we use, the actual crimpers, uh, the crimps, the pliers, um, just a few tricks like that. If I have time, I may come back and do a part five. But folks, you're ready to graze. It's springtime. Get out there. Get your fence in. Rotate them. Rotate them. But you can't do it unless you do this. you got to have some water out there. you got to have fence. you got to have control of your animals. Everyone have a good one. See you down the road.